this is. The off season. The voice in your ears is perfect purpose and welcome to the off season. I'm here to talk about all things relevant to me during the off season period of American football in Finland. Today's topic is what is motivation for European football players? And to help me shed some light on the subject, I have a guest host with me today. So I don't like to do the introductions. I like to tell you to do the introductions. So go ahead, tell these people your name, where you're from, where you're currently located, uh, how you're involved with football and stuff internationally, and what you want to get accomplished by being on the podcast today. Dear Vince, first and foremost, I appreciate you letting me on this, uh, branching out, getting a little, you know, sharing a little bit of my knowledge that I kind of have from over the years, uh, growing up in Florida and ending up in Germany. You're going to have to tell them your name. I didn't even say your name. You got to tell them your name. You got to get... (laughs) You got to do an introduction like they don't know who you are at all. Good to go, man. Good to go. So my name is Brandon Head. Uh, I am formerly head coach of Nuremberg Rams. Uh, Currently, I am certain I have a few options on the table, possibly in Sweden, possibly in Germany, uh, where my next coaching station will be. Uh, do personal training, strength conditioning, off-season training here in Germany. Uh, started my German football coaching at Hertz and Adam in 2020. And now in 2023, I've been with two teams and about to be into my third one. Um, I come from Florida. Uh, Where in Florida? Where in Florida? We want so, to so Panama City, Florida. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Specifically went to Freeport High School. Uh final four appearance, my sophomore year of high school. We have three regional champ or two regional championships, three region or three district championships. Uh I have a couple of baseball championships as well. Uh, but we here are talking about a little bit of football, so I'll stick with that. Um, and then from there, uh, 2012 went and played for Tusculum University, or it was formerly known Tusculum College, Division Two in t- in Tennessee. Uh, started out as a defensive end, a trans transitioned into a Mike linebacker. So I'm actually six one, but I was the smallest defensive end coming in my freshman year of college, and the uh, my older brother at the time, Kashad Lyons, he went and played for Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, he was 6'7", 290. I was 6'1", 212 pounds. So you were so the run. You can just you imagine run. that size difference, you know, and just coming in and, like, staring up at this guy like, oh, man, please, Lord, help me, Jesus. So from there, transition to Mike. Uh, ended up my career in 2015. After that, uh, transitioned into grad assist. All the while, I was coaching at South Green High School as a defensive coordinator, linebacker coach, special teams coordinator. And then all the while, I was grad assist at Tusculum. Transitioned into with the new staff that came in there in 2015. Uh with Jerry Odom, and he transferred me into special teams uh, assistant coordinator. Uh, helped out with strength conditioning in the off season for a couple of seasons, and then during the season, wide receivers and defensive line coach for a couple of seasons. Right. After like that, a normal the Army, uh, football career. <laughs> dude, it, it, well, there's actually a break, man. So I actually joined the military. And that's how I got over here into Europe. Uh, after I was due, so I was literally catching a train uh, on my way out of transitioning out of the military. I was catching a train from where I was at to Nuremberg. And I was, and I seen Emmanuel Lewis. <laughs> and he told me all about European League of Football, or not at the time, but uh, he told me all about Europe, European football, German football. 
uh, I have a frowl over here, so it made it a little bit easier for me to come back and stay. Uh, I was just planning on, you know, doing the basic, going back home, coaching a little bit of high school ball, uh, and then trying to work back up the ladder into the college world after the military through that. But I'm finding a huge market over here. Uh, you know, it's just about player motivation, which we're about to get into in this meeting. And uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, I'm just here to honestly motivate, get guys oriented in the right direction with football, make sure that you're on the right path, whether it be strength conditioning in the off season, whether it be sustaining that you're in the season, uh, because I believe in your knee health, and your ankle health is a huge thing that prohibits guys throughout the season. Game five, six, seven, you're going to have a lot of tendencies where guys start to break down, you know, from that. From not having a good off-season program and getting into the season and not putting that demand that they put on game day throughout the week to prepare for that, you know. Yeah. But, Sounds but that's me, dude. I'm just uh, I'm just from a small town, uh, and I'm doing kind of big things here in Europe. I, I one thing that stood out about your story. I just got to throw this in there before we jump to the topic. Is what's up? You're one of those few people that you know when you're like you know about to get on a train or something, someone starts talking to you about football. I've been living in Europe, well, technically <laughs> Europe, but you know it's Finland, and I guess it's because I'm in Finland, but. Never in my life has ever, anyone ever looked at me and been like, hey, you know anything about American football? Like, that's almost never come up, like, organically. And I am and I literally wear shirts and stuff that say American football in Finland. Like, yeah. almost <laughs> never does anyone, like, actually talk to me about football. I've, yeah. I've actually, in the town that I'm in now, in Lati, I wear the basketball team stuff, and I've been asked plenty of times, do I play for a basketball team by yeah. random people? I used to live in a city here called Kovala where there wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, dark skinned brothers out there. So almost yes, everyone yeah. that saw me just assumed I was on the basketball team. <laughs> but like, yeah. I've never, I've, uh, I've never been fortunate enough to be looked at as a football player. When I was in college, I remember, and I, I tell the story way too much. You think it's just because of your height or something? I'm, I'm 5'10". 190, 195. Like, exactly. I don't see like, why they wouldn't. That's like perfect running back. I'm a, I'm a legitimate. Like, way. Yeah, I look like a running back if you know what a running back is. But if you oh, don't know, oh, then, man. you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is what it is. Running back. I, re- I remember when I was in college, I was on campus. I was always mistaken for somebody that played on the, the baseball team. Like, I'd be wearing, you know, Where'd team. you go to school at? Stephen of Austin in Texas, East Texas. Oh, really? Yeah. That, I was I was there. We won we won some conference titles while I was there. You know, I did I did my thing. Nothing special. All programs in the country. Yeah, they're moving up to FBS now, so that's pretty cool. Wow. But you know, not, nothing to brag about. Because like I said, if I was walking with a whole bunch of football players, they'd be like, "Oh, are you are you guys athletes?" You're like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Oh, you must play baseball." I'm like, "Damn!" I'm like, "Damn!" <laughs> I'm out here, you know, trying to put on weight. Like I was, yeah. I spent my whole college career trying to get bigger, so I look like a football player. But anyways, that's kind of the vibe of the show, you know. I just throw in anecdotes every now and again. But Dude, please, 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 <laughs> let's jump on the on the actual topic here. Right. Um, the topic today, motivation for playing football. We want to yeah. stick to like European players because I think the yeah. American players is pretty easy. Yeah, but, they, they have their motivation set, man. Their feeder system. All the way from five years old, all the way till twenty-five. Yeah, you, I you have your, you have your reasons to play. Yeah, so I'm saying like I still have guys, you know, messaging me at the at the chance of like, hey man, you got a chance for me to go play football, and they're just they don't care about the money. Sure, they need a place to stay, but they just want to strap the pads on and play. That's that's motivation you can't buy. True. You know what what I'm saying? The, like, the first thing I want to talk that, about yeah. was personally, I want to say my motivation. Again, this my yeah, podcast. Yeah. So you're going to get a, a little flavor of purpose the whole time. But 
And again, I don't know why. Today I'm in an anecdotal mood, so I'm telling stories. But my motivation for playing football, I want to explain that I'm from Texas. Yeah. Uh, from a 409G County stand up, uh, Texas City, Texas, Southeast Houston, you know, greater yeah. Houston area. That's what you, that's what we made all district, greater Houston area. Couldn't be all state because I mean, I'm from Texas. It's hard. Hey, baby. You're I played around the time Adrian Peterson football. played and Jamal Charles. It, it tells you my age, but also tells you the level of competition of, you know, Texas. If you but, don't know Jamal Charles, you need to just get out of here. Hey, that dude, hey. I was at a couple track meets against him, and it didn't go well for me. Anyways. <laughs> Dude, I was at a 7v7 in lower Alabama with Tim Tebow. My freshman year of high school, his senior year of high school, when yeah. he was just recruited. So I'm with you on that, baby. Yeah. So back to my motivation. Uh, yeah. My motivation for playing football, I, I will say my motivation for playing football from the very beginning yeah. was – to do what my mother told me. I mm. was about four and a half, maybe five years old. I don't think I was five yet. I, oh, I got man, I played a little bit early that my birthday. <laughs> but <laughs> one day, one random yeah. ass day, my mother says, get in the car. <clears throat> I get in the car. Yeah. 30 minutes later, I walk in this building. They're putting a the helmet on my head and putting shoulder pads on me and, and making sure I get the right size. That's how I got into football. Like it was it was just yeah. one of those things. She signed me up because she was like, this is what little boys do. Yeah. And so I was playing football by the time I was like five or six. And I didn't know I didn't know exactly what I was doing or how to play football until I was like 10 or 11. I spent years playing this sport and didn't really understand what's going on. Yeah. I, I remember when the coaches asked who wants to play quarterback. I put my hand up and come to find out <laughs> I had volunteered to play cornerback. Oh no! The accent. So I was playing defense, okay, yeah. and I was like, "Okay, I guess this is it." And you know, that's all she wrote. Uh, first time mm-hmm. I ever got the ball in the game, I was six years old. I think it was almost my second year playing. They gave me the football in the game, and I've been playing, so I know how the game goes. Yeah, I get the ball and run ninety nine yards the other way, <laughs> and like I get to the end zone, and I'm about to spike the ball. I, and I hear all the shit. I'm like, no, 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 no. And all the fans and, like, parents on the side are like, run the other way. I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, obviously, yeah. I was a kid. I didn't say, oh, shit. But I thought in my mind, yeah. how did I run the wrong way? And that's where I started. And that's the bottom. But, I mean, if I was to say, now I'm here, you know, I've yeah. I earned a college scholarship to play football. I um, sure. traveled over yeah. the world, traveled oh, yeah. around the world playing American football. That's how far you can go in this sport. So yeah. for me, my motivation for the sport, obviously, I'm joking about, you know, my mom made me. But yeah. as soon as I got into the sport, it was always something where I could always get better. So my motivation has always been I can be better at this. Like, I can never really be perfect at this sport. So the challenge of football was always my motivation. And I know that that might not, you know, resonate with everyone. But that for definitely me, resonates a sport with where definitely. Yeah, football, football is one of those sports where – you can't you really to challenge nothing. yourself. And you you can't to. like if you're running track and you yeah. run a certain time, yeah. that could be the fast time you ever run. Yeah. And that's it. Like you can't get back to that time because age and your life will get you. But it's like in football, like look at someone like Tom Brady. Um, after he won three Super Bowls just you, over the years. Yeah. You I can always that. get better and you yeah. can always like develop and challenge. So for my motivation, it's always sure. like man, I can always get better. And that's what made me want to continue playing. I'm one of those, I'm a, not a sore loser. I'm more like a sore <laughs> winner, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I always remember when I played, like, after we win, I'm always just like, oh, what's next? Like, I, mm-hmm. I could never really be satisfied because yeah. I would immediately start thinking about what I could have done. You know, and I can kind of see where you kind of get that sore winning kind of mentality because a lot of teams deflate after wins. When mm. they always come back to that practice that next week after a win, and it's like, all right, what do we really have to do to get better when we just when we just stacked up a dub I, last I always week? Feel like I, I beat some chumps. I always feel like I beat some chumps because I'm like – I didn't play my best game. How the fuck did we win? This is bullshit. I got to get back in the gym or something. And then, like, when we when we lose, 
I don't feel nearly like as bad as some people would feel about losing. Like I will tell you this right now. I have never, I have never cried about losing a football game. And there's only one game in my life that I've ever lost that I, it still haunts me because I, I was tackled out of bounds, like two seconds left on the clock and they ran the clock out uh, instead of giving us our last play. Yeah. And at the end of our like football banquet, they showed us that exact time frame in slow motion, catered to some some song by Eminem. I think it was uh, One Shot or Lose Yourself or so. Like yeah, it was I, yeah. that whole was album from crazy. Eminem. I don't. I can't listen to anymore because it like yeah. sends me back. I'm like, ugh. But I was never the type to like like the even in that cry. moment. I didn't cry. <laughs> Like, I know yeah. some people do get really emotional about it, but I'm one of those guys that my motivation for when I want to win, obviously, but if yeah. I'm going to lose, I know that I probably did everything I could. So it's never going to occur to me that I should cry because if I lose, that's just the way to, you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, yeah, you're like, not the type of person to say I left something out there on the field to say, okay, I lost. I have kind of regret. Kind of left back. What I really the hate field. is those yeah, guys I, who cry and then you're like, yo, man, bitch you ass didn't do cry. nothing. Like, what you, you cry for? Man. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, you're crying probably because you have more self regret because you could have yeah. done more. Yeah, you didn't do uh, enough to help us I win. I, I've never felt like it, a I, game I was like. I understand your mentality of, of that. I can't say that I haven't cried. I cried after my last senior year. Whatever, because I had grown up with them boys, whatever, and it was the last. We were in the playoffs? Oh, dude, we were regional championship. Should have won that year. If we win that game, we win the state championship that year. Oh, wow. Because uh, the team that we played was in our district, everything like that, in our region, and we ended up seeing them second round of the playoffs. We thought Chipley would beat them. Chipley ended up having a hurt running back. If so, facto, we see them. Uh, we end up losing to them, even though we won against them in the regular season, and that tied it up for us. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that that was the only time. But that was only because uh, you're never. I was never going to get to play with these. I I really engulfed the situation of being with a team. Yeah, and never being with that team again. Like yeah. the transition from sophomore to junior year or junior or senior year is always kind of like, all right, we've got this, we've got these boys coming back. We're motivated. You know, we lost the seniors. That sucks. Da, da, da. But as a senior looking down, it's kind of like at any level, so college, high school, if you're a senior in the pros, whatever, same thing looking down, it's just like, man, I'll never have that same team atmosphere. Tom Brady will never have that 2001 Super Bowl team. Mm, you know what I'm true. saying? We'll never have that team again, that bond and that unity. And, dude, I really love what you said about your motivation because I know you'll never run a 100-yard touchdown backwards again. But God damn it. That's <laughs> some of the craziest shit. But dude. you know what? I it's could I could do full awesome. circle because my senior year, I I had like a a ninety nine yard touchdown like in in like the first game of the season, like yeah. a kickoff return or something. So I I made up those yards years later. <laughs> Prime time stepped on them. Like, yeah, that shit's crazy. I can't believe I did that. And oh man, but I guess getting somewhat back to the uh, topic is you know yeah, yeah. um. Obviously, I want to talk about my motivation and a little yeah. bit about how that feeds into it. Cause yeah. you know, that's kind of how I think about football. Is you always think through your own lenses. Of we try course. to, you know, get outside our box and have empathy for other people and sympathize with how someone else is feeling. But when it comes to like motivation, you usually find it has out to that come within yourself. It has yeah. to come within yourself, man. Coaches usually, you know, impact their players with their type of motivation. Sure. And it usually it trickles down and you'll see it yeah. in the sport. You'll see a team. Um, their 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 overall motivation is dictated by the head coach and what he preaches and tells them is important. And, you know, when I try to assume what motivation is for others, that's where this episode really takes us. Is you know, 
how can we talk about what someone else's motivation is who isn't yeah. like us? Like, yeah. like you play, <laughs> let's just say it like this. You grew up playing football in Florida. I grew yeah. up playing football in Texas. Yeah. People don't have to ask us our motivation. Just those two yeah. sentences. People yeah. understand that like football is king and we're we're a certain type of person. Like we show our brother to sweat, baby. Yeah, like there's there's nobody that comes from California, Texas, or Florida that plays football that you you can't just walk up to them and kind of understand, okay, this is that type of person. Yeah, exactly. But when we go to Europe, um I hey, I segued all the way to it, didn't I? Um when we're talking about Europe, you got people from, you know, Germany, you got different parts of Germany, North Germany, Bavaria area. You have where I'm up here in Finland, the Scandinavian countries, uh, the Nordics. You have East and Western Europe because let's, I mean, let's be real. Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic. That's different than Spain, France, Italy, even. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, let's go real international. They're playing football down there in Brazil. Yeah. North and South Brazil. Yeah. People don't know about that. Sao yeah. Paulo is not all there is in Brazil, you know? is That that country is bigger than Mexico. the United States. Mexico's yeah, I, blowing up, I played too. in Brazil in, in south, in the southern part of Brazil, which is totally different than, you know, the northern part. I played in a, in a city where they had German heritage. There was Oktoberfest. And I played yeah. in another city where yeah. it was more Italian vibe. Almost all the Brazilians there had huh. Italian passports as well, like... There's a lot of different, you know, cultures and backgrounds to these people playing this sport of American football, and everyone's coming to it a different way. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I like like how, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's where we're at now. So I'm just going to, I'll let you throw out one, then I'll throw out one. But like, what do you think is one of the like major, major motivations for Europeans, let's say Europeans, for playing American football? So I think, I think the first thing that I have is the reasons to play. Like, okay. why? What? Why is there a reason to play? Like, you just listed yours. My reason to play was because I. I it was just, man. I can smell the field when mm-hmm. I woke up, and my dad drove us to the field for that practice in the evening. Lights were on. People were running around. Coach had a dip spit in his mouth. It was just that environment. You know what I'm saying? The reasons of playing over here starts with probably a game of watching an NFL game, probably with Tom Brady. Some some Europeans uh, games of probably when they played in London the first couple of years back or – uh, when they played in Munich this past November, like some players, this is their first kind of motivation to um, find in their game. Yeah. So seeing, them seeing this, they can, they'll only see like a high level and like kind of a flashy kind of level of football to where they really don't get to see that sixth, seventh and eighth grade football player that is literally looking not only at the season of head of him, but he's looking at his freshman year of high school. Like, man, that is knocking at my door, whether I want it to or not. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's it's coming. And either your motivation to play, it, it you either get smacked in the face because your freshman year of high school, nobody ever forgets their first – freshman year of high school practice. Yeah. Nobody ever forgets that. Fall practice, you come in and you know it's about to be a hurting. Like you're about to get beat physically, mentally, all the way around for a whole freshman year on a JV squad. And if you're fortunate, you get to go to varsity and you really get beat up there because you have to adapt to that level of play. So I think... European players finding that reason to play and having that own personal motivation of of having some reason to get out of bed, 
Like, yeah. why is your reason to go to practice, man? Why? What is your reason? And I think it has to start with the structure of how teams are being brought up into football and how coaches are bringing players into football. Because I think, I, I really think it begins at the coaching level of us instilling a kind of set guidelines that not only match the way we kind of do it in America, but it's like you manipulate the system as a coach to create a competitive environment, which is going to ultimately create your motivation. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. It, without get into that, the sport. With, Without that competitive environment, I'm sorry, dude, but like I'm I'm not a golfer and I can't go out there and swing that stick and hope that I can beat myself that next time. No, I have to literally go up against giants, not physically. And <laughs> dude, there's some giants your size too, per that. I mean, it, let's just be real. They run through people six one, six two, six three. Hey, don't be surprised. I was I was a six hundred pound squatter. Now look out! I was a big. Hey, I was a full I'm, running back. Like I'm saying, I couldn't do it nowadays. I'll be honest. Your with size you. dudes used to be scary, especially for me because so shifty, and I can't grab you because I can't see your hips. Kind of thing, you know. We were always brought up, yeah, all oh, the hips inside out, kind of track and trace that. But I'm like, all right, I'm playing Brian Marshall. He's literally 5'2", 170 pounds, playing at Division II, balling. He's probably got, I don't know, 150 yards per game. But he's, uh, you know, you can't touch it. And that's the that's that kind of competition environment that was just, I don't know, dude. Iron sharpens iron. And if you don't have the players on your team to kind of create that motivation for you to be motivated, like for you to create that sense of motivation of going out there, I, you know, it'd be hard, but I feel like that the reason finding their reason as a European player is the basis of that motivation. It makes sense. I, I like how you're talking about like how you, how you get into the sport, like yeah. that's obviously your reason for like wanting to play. But then once you get into the sport, the competitive environment, I, I think a lot of players do like that. And, and that's more your high end players, more yeah. your guys. And I'm thinking from, you know, small ball here in Finland, like most teams are pretty small. And even thinking like the smaller levels when you're trying to get new players, Usually you find someone who, oh, they saw an NFL game, they liked it, exactly. so they come to practice. And yeah. then in practice, it's really, I, I like it. I, again, I'm not European, so I can't speak for Europeans, but yeah. I love the whole weeding out, you know, the shit from, you know, what you need. Like yeah. when people get there, you get people, they start playing a sport. And if it's a real calm environment and there's not a lot of competition, You'll have players who aren't really competitive hang around because they're like, uh, it's okay. But well, if you make it a competitive players. environment from yeah. the beginning, yeah. you find out if they're really going to be football players or if they just like watching the NFL. Shit, yeah. look in the States. Everybody can talk about the NFL. You got people that have plenty of podcasts and people. Matter of fact, I just went home for the holidays and my brother is a Cowboys fan. Um, one of my cousins is a Saints fan. I'm a Rams fan. And we got into some heated arguments like we have any stake in any of those teams. Like, we don't. But, like, I mean. Y'all are betting $500. I was, I was, I was trying to stay out of it until they started talking shit about the Rams. Like, hold up. We got a Super Bowl. Bears fan, so in the I'm last 10 years, out of these play. three teams, we yeah. got one. So And we just got it last year. I was like, we taking a year off? That's cool, but shoot. Now, you know, I talked about the Cowboys. Y'all do get a little bit of bragging respects right now, though. Y'all do. What? Up until, I, up until tonight. But I don't we, care. We'll get I into do not care. Later. If the Rams <laughs> don't win a Super Bowl for the next 30 years, that will be fine with me. Because you know what? There's six teams in the NFL that haven't won any. 
I'm telling you, dude, the Bears, so, we haven't seen one since early 2000s. So. Yeah, and that's a, that's another thing. It's like there's people that haven't won in so long. I'm like, e- winning is the at point. And we won. won baby. Yeah. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to try to win every season. You can't. Somebody has to. Everybody loses. One person wins. We won one. I'm good with it. But, right. again, I digress, as I always yeah. did. Anyway, damn it. But uh, what I wanted to talk about was one thing. I'm talking about something I think is motivation for European players is, okay. I think, and I'm going to the youth now. I'm going to talk about, yeah. like, the youth. Because I think you have to get youth players to play. I, I don't really stuff, too much man. care for, you know, recruiting adults. We have jobs and lives and like in Europe in a yeah, culture that's not proving that. Yeah. It's proving that. You know what I'm saying? And it's proving that in a good and a bad way by the youth and the feeder systems that are coming out from Europe. You know? Yeah. So back back to the, the youth, I think that a lot of times when we're getting players to play, you know, like football, what happens is a kid will be like, oh, that looks fun. I'll go. And they don't know anybody on the team. And those kids, they usually don't end up staying unless they really, like, find friends right away. But what really happens is that you go to a local school and you tell these kids to come sign up and they come in pairs or groups of three. Like, a clique will decide, okay, let's try it. And out of the three, hopefully you get two. And if you only get one, maybe he goes to school with someone who's already on the team. So they have that connection or something like that. And you kind of in Europe, it's different because it's club ball. So it's yeah. always like a hobby sport. So if people have friends that are doing this, it's yeah. easy for them to stay in it. You have guys who will play football for 10 years just because their friends do. Exactly. They don't really, I mean, they might not, they might be good, they might not, but they don't really care about quitting or doing something else because in their free time, they want to hang out with their friends. Their friends are playing football. So I, I see that as a motivation. I think that's something that can be, you know, continued. It's just, it's a little bit different than in the States where you don't really need friends. Football players will become your friends. Yeah. That's not, that's not always the case in Europe. I've yeah. seen it, you, especially you here. You in the environment back home. Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, that's like it is around here. But like you said, man, it's just the, we, we can talk about it till we're blue in the face about it being a club sport, like it being a club sport means that we as coaches should have the leniency of showing these clubs how to properly run a program without it being a professional type business organization. You can still run one with a great feeder system just put people and assets in place to where, man, to where players can really find that motivation to come to the field without having to have 10 or 12 friends growing up. Like, I never had to have, I mean, yeah, all my boys were out there playing ball, but I never had to have somebody calling me to get me to come to practice, which I experienced here in Germany. Dudes are literally calling people, and you know they're sitting on the couch. You know they're your homeboys. They're sitting on the couch, and they have to wait until another grown man calls you to get you out to the field. And and that psychology in my mind does not make sense to me. And, you know, we as coaches, we really have to walk. I know we have to walk a balance beam in Europe when it comes to – setting standards and our players meeting those standards because we understand back home in America, if if we've got our standards and check, 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 and then our players don't check off on that one, we know we have a problem Mm -hmm. and we can mitigate that. And we can, we can, you know, as a coach, like hone in on that and fix that problem with here. Players know the system too easy. True. It's too easy, dude. So that's where us coaches have to find that way of motivating. And, you know, I I think it's creating that team atmosphere. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Like I, I say, like, you know, friends, that's one reason why people play. And yeah. what what you're agreeing with me, obviously, is that yeah, yeah. the team needs to be their, their friends. 
And I I feel like yeah. that's where we're missing it on a, a lot of teams that yes. well, it's a good and a bad thing. I've seen some teams go basically dismantle completely because the core <laughs> were friends. And once the core is like, we're all I'm out, it was like, oh, you lost like 10 players at once. And you're like, yes. maybe we should do more than just rely on friends. But yeah. it also comes to the fact that if someone's playing a sport and they're only doing it because of their friends, then the sport isn't really giving them the support that they want. Because yeah. I've, I've coached a team recently here in Finland where the team ended up folding. Like, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. We had a core of about 14 players. There wasn't enough to play, so the team ended up folding. But those 14 guys, they they weren't, like, close friends or anything. They just wanted to play football, and they had been playing together for the last couple of years. About half of them, they still hang out go out together, even though they're not playing football anymore, which let mm-hmm. lets me know that what we were doing was on the right track in some aspects because I had a player tell me, he said, coach, before you got here, I used to, you know, hang out with the guys at practice, but that was yes. it. Like, we talk football, and then I never see them until next practice. But now, you know, we go bowling on the weekends. We play, what is it, Call of Duty that they play, those games? Yeah. <laughs> I got invited once. I kept – going wandering off and doing my own thing yeah. so they never invited me back so it is what it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> i wasn't very you know, so but, yeah. this, man, i, I kind of want to pick your brain on this while i got you here dude so Go for it. Uh, and it's it's on topic uh but you know i feel like if i pick your brain about it right now maybe in the comments when you put this out uh people kind of you know share a little bit of light and their experience on this as well, because I know you've been here in Europe and you've, you've kind of seen the field and know what, what it's about. Mm -hmm. If, if you're a coach, should a coach in Europe set standards and then like, should they not only have to set the standard, like on a forum, like, your WhatsApp group or your Facebook group or however you translate or uh, communicate to your team. But like, then should the coach have to like individually reach out to players and kind of like coddle them to practices or coddle them to games or coddle them to meetings? Like, I don't understand. Like once you put information out, should a coach have to, because I know the answer in America, like if, if a coach puts something out, you don't show up, you don't play. I, I'll, you know what I'm saying? But here, like I said, they manipulate the system. I think. And they really understand, do. like, they can kind of bend and manipulate your rules because I would they say work it really high. depends on the, the team and the infrastructure of the team. Um, yeah. If I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be 100% honest with you here, there's some teams where, you know, it's chaotic information isn't shared properly and and so you never know but if if i was to give you you know the blueprint is is very simple the if you're the head coach the head coach should have the support of management and if they have the support of management then communication is easy because management takes care of communication but if you're the head coach and you're trying to get your standards set with your team it comes down to a coach there's always got to be a level of division between coaches and players. Yeah. You can, of course. you can have camaraderie. You can be informal. You know, you can cut jokes. Y'all can hang out, but there needs to be, there needs to be a barrier between the two. There's a difference between a coach and a player. There always needs to be that set. That's the first standard is that I'm your coach, you. not your teammate. Yes. We're on the same team, but I'm yeah. your coach. As long as they understand that, no. the trickle down will work that. The coach will set the standards. The I would depend on how you want to do it, but the captains or team leaders of the team, they yeah. enforce the standard. So yeah. what what most yeah. successful programs have is, you know, they have captains, but most like colleges and even teams in Europe, there's a group of guys who maybe it's official, unofficial, they run the team. Exactly. Those yeah. guys, if they're in line with the coach, yeah. then they enforce the standard. And the coach never really has to enforce it. He shouldn't have to enforce it. The coach should be able to tell those guys, <clears throat> we got slackers, here's their names. And those guys go handle it. 
That's it. Like, he doesn't have to say, you need to talk to him. No, he says, these guys aren't handling their shit. Or when we have practice, do you see who's not there? And those players say, we know who's not there. Well, they handle your shit, and they handle their shit. After that, the players either fall in line or they don't. And it it takes away all that wishy-washy of manipulating the system, doing this, because the team is held accountable by its own players. If it's if the Dude, coach I, is the one trying to hold the players accountable, what yeah. happens is it's a different type of division. It's a exactly. you and us division instead of a hierarchy on the same team. That's exactly. why you need the players to enforce what the coaches set yeah. as a standard. And yeah. again, I'm saying this all hypothetically. It's not easy to do, um, yeah. but in the exactly. right circumstances creating, with the right people, it's creating that team atmosphere. And I'm telling you, dude. That ties in to the central motivational key of what drives the team. Because I, you know, I got to watch Swabish Hall on game yeah. film. I got to watch Munich Cowboys on game film. I got to watch Cologne Crocodiles on game film. I've watched how these teams operate on film. And you can tell the difference in level just between these specific teams of their player motivation between each other, their accountability between each other is what is driving their motivating factor to do their job on the field. Because let's just be real, like your motivation is execution, right? If you're not executing what's formulating your motivation, not really anything, right? So it's, it's creating that level of execution by motivating yourself <laughs> and motivating others, you know? So I I really, man, I think that, that that really ties into, especially the seniors aspect. When it comes to the youth aspect, I, I really think it comes down to us coaches. I yeah. think it comes down to how we operate, how, because we obviously know the parents usually going to bring them to practice. So we control that environment up into a certain extent. It's, it's that, it's that U16, U19 break that players tend to have that division of that mental motivation fact. I blame girls, kind of I blame thing. girls, women, women, and life. I mean, I uh, guess as a teenager, that's what happens. Uh, yeah. these, these kids, when they turn 17, 18, 19, depending on you know where they are in life, yeah. all of a sudden, okay, now I need to get a job. Now I got a girlfriend. Now I got to decide if I want to go to uni or not. Like all this comes into factor while yeah. those 14, 15 year olds are just like, this is what I want to do after school. So, and then a 25 and up adult man is like, this is what I want to do with my free time. This is what yes. I want to pursue. But yeah. in between, I guess from 17 to 24, those, which is the prime years of playing American football in Europe. Yeah. That's the hardest to lock in motivation because everyone's motivation is different. That that reminds me of the next thing I was going to talk about was, you know, another reason that people have their motivation for playing football would be, you know, having fun or it being a hobby, yeah. like how they spend their free time. Like yeah. this, that's their motivation is that, you know, in my free time, I like to play this sport. This is my hobby. This is what I like to do for fun. Or in Finland, this is what I like to do to get away from my wife. That's what I yeah. like men do to play football. <laughs> like uh instead of staying instead of getting off work and coming home for four to five hours i'm gonna come home for about an hour and a half go play football for two two and a half hours come home hopefully wife is getting ready to go to sleep maybe get a little a little nooky nooky and then go to sleep yeah. make my day yeah. easier yeah, of course <laughs> it's, it's a big thing in finland too a lot of people <laughs> i thought it was so funny when i first found that out but it, it's also a very good motivation, um, having fun and it being a hobby. Me personally, whenever I'm coaching or playing football, I want to have a good time. Um, yeah, man. I know some people don't care for repetition as much as I do coming from a real football state, but repetition is fun for me. You know, doing yeah, something man. a thousand times and knowing that I can't do it wrong. And, and perfecting it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, when, I, when, I, when I was a player a long time ago, I was one of those players that, like, when we're at practice, I'm constantly trying to figure out either how I can make my team better or how I can improve myself. But also, I love having a good time. 
So I'm a I'm one of those talkers. Like if I'm not in, I'm talking about some shit. When we're warming up, I'm talking about some shit. I'm talking, well, I don't watch it, but you know, I'm like talking about Game of Thrones or something while we're catching passes or talking yeah. about a mo- a book or a movie that I've seen. Like I'm connecting with my teammate the entire time. Even as a coach, I have a a little bit of a tendency. That to, personal relationship, man, goes so much. It's so much more fun that way for me. Yeah, like, man. It just like, makes it more fun. When you're out there, I mean, it's like working a job, dude, except it, the environment that you're around really dictates, like, that $15 an hour that you're making. You know what I'm saying? If that, you're right. Well, if that, right? But in the playing world, it's so much even scrutinized because you know you can have a great athlete as your right cornerback and he can you know be there the top moments and everything like that but you know there's always that point in time when he comes off the sideline during the game when really you need motivation but really he's not bringing that mental that spiritual Mm -hmm. motivation to keep that team fluent and that engine going like that. Right. So I think it, I think being a selfish player is another thing that we need uh, to discuss as well when it comes to that motivation, but it just comes down to creating that team environment, dude. Don't be a selfish player. The only way you can be a selfish player is, a selfish player is someone who who doesn't have any connection with the team. That's one exactly. of those guys who either he exactly. doesn't have any friends on the team or he doesn't do it for fun. And I don't know, I don't know how you can play football and not be doing it for fun. Um, I'm not a, a big guy. I'm not a I am a strong guy. I'm not gonna say I'm not a strong guy. I've never been a big guy, I've never been like an intimidating guy. People don't look at me like, oh my god, I'm afraid of him. But I do understand how some people they just love to they think it's fun to go around and hit people. Yeah. That's cool. You know, I, 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 when I was a younger man, I like to, you know, bring a little wood myself, but yeah, as, you know, as an adult, as I got older, I was like, I don't do all that. I'll just make people miss and look good. Yeah. No smile for the camera. Take some stuff. <laughs> but again, wow. that's so fun. But those guys who, who, when you look to them for leadership or you need them to motivate others and they don't step up to the challenge, those are those guys that you know that they're not in it for the right reasons. Exactly. And the the only issue, honestly, I'll I'll be hundred percent honest, especially if we're speaking like imports and stuff. Like, yeah, you, you got to get your money. If some people out here to make money, some people are not. Do what you got to do. Uh-huh. I don't, that's not my my place. But uh-huh. how you act affects others. If yeah. you are a selfish minded player, uh-huh. you could be taking the fun out of it for other people. Maybe like, that's another aspect to this topic that we're kind of breaching around, but really not touching is the import aspect and how their character, how they carry themselves. Like, dude, I've seen so many just flagrant personal fouls of stupidity. <laughs> like, I literally watched a guy scrub across the ground on game film. And then as the dude's lifting up, like he scraped across the ground catching the football as he's lifting up their import smacks him in the face mm. and you just see the flag at the end of the play just flash across the screen and it's just like all right that is a prime example of one player especially somebody that has played college ball has been recruited to come over here from supposedly the greatest nation in the world that has uh, the greatest football in the world, right? I, uh, you can't be saying supposedly. Come on. It, it's a fact. The best players are well, from that country. Well, the reason I say supposedly is because we're supposed to be held up to a higher standard. But then we're, then we've are then we got players going out there and doing that. That's why I say supposedly because we're supposed to be at the highest character, the highest level of i mean think about when you were growing up and you seen the highest level of aau basketball man like that was elite stuff you know those players got there by doing the right things 
When yeah. players come over here, they don't need to lose their head because they need to know, like, other than the NFL, and really do European players watch college football? Not really. Not that I see. Not right? like they should. Not, Not like, like they, they should. should. So I mean, what's the better. only <laughs> closest thing to college football that they have is the American import. Mm-hmm. And how they act, how they carry themselves, and how they act towards the coach is a huge, I I think it's a huge factor of motivation for European players. because Especially when deciding their team to play for. Yeah, exactly. You got these teams that have, if they have a ton of imports, some players won't play for them because they're like, well, I don't want to play with that many imports. I don't want this many people that aren't invested in my team yeah. as teammates, which I, I don't blame anyone for that. But no. the only reason that could ever happen is because shitty imports were there. Like yeah. People that didn't do exactly. it right fucked it up for everybody else. Yeah. That happens all the time. I, all the time. Dude. throw out an anecdote of my, my playing time. career. When I was in Finland the, the first time <laughs> to play – and we the team I played for, the management, like they treated us very bad. It was horrible. And I really? I'm already, you know, I'm at peace with it now. But yeah, they had good reason to because they had been screwed over previously. Like it wasn't because they just hated us, like they wanted us to be there, but they were very precautious about like what we could or couldn't do. And yeah. they treated us as if we were the people that had already burned them. And they're at fault for that, but also the people that came before us are the ones that really fucked it up. And that's what happens is if enough people come in there, like if people see, you know, certain players play certain ways, they're going to go into that thinking either, you know, I don't know if I actually want to play on this team or you might lose players because they don't want to play for, you know, certain types of coaches who are imports. Yeah. Like that happens also. You have import coaches yeah. come in and they don't do things right, and players don't play or players quit, and then that team is at a loss, and now you're still trying to motivate whoever is left on that team to play in a situation that's not ideal for them. So, yeah, I agree with you 100% about that. Like, that's something that has to be addressed for most teams is that you want to make sure you get high-quality players so that it doesn't impact the motivation of your players. Yeah. You you really don't want uh, imports – Imports are are supposed to supplement teams in Europe. They're not supposed to take over teams. So if yeah, you have exactly. an import on your team, that this person's person presence is, shouldn't you know, affect terrible. your teammates' motivation to play or win. Yeah, it really shouldn't. I mean, yeah. it can and it most likely does. But you really, in a perfect world, you want to get an import who, when he comes and plays, he doesn't bring any negativity to the motivation of your domestic players. Um, One what of else the, I got on here? I got some. I got a couple notes written down. But yeah, uh, some on. more some more motivation of like why players are playing football and why they should keep doing it. One thing that I think is a major motivation because I think this is how people get recruited is yeah. just being athletic or playing sports in general, like exercise. Some people play football and they they. I'm sorry, I'm stuttering, but they really think that playing football. <laughs> Will like get them in shape or something, which it does not. We all know it does not. <laughs> uh, uh, unless you unless you show up to the conditioning every day and yeah, because playing football, we've seen all the shapes and sizes out here in Europe. Like oh, yeah. almost anyone yeah. can actually play. But I do think that's a that's one reason a lot of guys do end up playing is they're like, this is a way I can exercise that I like. Like someone yeah. who likes to hit people. But doesn't want to do like boxing or MMA per se, you know. I mean, yeah, helmets really, and pads. I run and hit some people a couple of days a week. That's a good way for me to want to play this sport and have fun doing it. And um, I mean, really, name there. another sport that a uh, three hundred and ten pound big boy can go out there and dominate. There isn't be a star. Of a kind. <laughs> no, other than if he's a power forward. And he better be able to move up and down the court for an hour. Yeah. Very unlikely. I, yeah, I think I think exercise and like just being athletic is something that's the sport. Yeah. Well, obviously at the higher level, you kind of you can aspire to it. The lower yeah. levels, you get what you get. 
But a, a lot of teams that are the higher end teams, like you have teams that have they've started like academies and stuff, and they'll have the strength and conditioning programs in the off season. It really does help. Um, I've had players here in Finland. Everyone's doing some type of program in in the off season to become a better player. And honestly, if they weren't playing football, they'd have no reason to do these type of things. So exactly. it's it's that type of motivation that the sport can can give you is to be more like athletic, even. Even when you're done playing football, I, well, I, now I'm talking more towards us old imports. Is you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't play football anymore. Yeah, but because I was a football player, yeah. every time I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, okay, I could, I could still, you know, I could still make it shake. I'm not gonna. Don't get it twisted. I ain't coming out of retirement. But nah. if I look in the mirror and I'm like, nah, you wouldn't last. I'm like, fuck, I gotta go hit the gym. I get you it. know what? Matter of no, fact, while I'm here. here uh, I want to pat myself on the back. I'm back in the gym now, guys. Uh, I took go. a five year hiatus. Oh, let's get go. Him. You see a little oh, python man. eating the uh, yeah, rat? You know, that's how I do. Yeah, get it up there. I, I literally I stopped playing. I retired from American football 2017. That was my last season. Um, and then 2022, around the same time, around like October ish, I was like, fuck it. Actually, September, September. Um, August, I tried, just never actually got into the gym. I got the membership, but September, I actually got into the gym. And now we're in, when we're recording this episode, we're in February and I'm at three days a week consistently. And, you know, those first couple months, you know, I'm one day, two day, four days, then one day, then two day, like, but eventually got back into focus it. Focus on strength or what's your focus on more on? Oh, uh, well, well. Actually, I, I, I put myself through, you know, yeah. stages. The first yeah. couple months, it was just pretty much stretching and wellness. Um, I was yeah. very tight, yeah. hips, yeah. hamstrings, back, to get back. Your, your flexibility. All that. I didn't see if you got any injuries, honestly. I do, yeah, I don't really have any. I'm not an injury-prone person. Um, ACL back in, like, 08, but, you know, nothing. Hey, you, yeah. you play football 20 years and you jump out of planes. I don't want to know about all that. But, yeah, but I, I just worked work. myself back into it. I, yeah. I worked a lot of flexibility stretching first. Didn't yeah. even, for the first two months, didn't even hit, didn't touch a bar or weight. Like I didn't. I was on a bike and stretching and stretching my body, not using assisted um, materials or anything. Mostly just stretching, getting on the treadmill, getting on the elliptical and the bike, like moving different muscles to get me stretched and able to like run if I need to. I ain't actually running though. And then eventually I started, you know, getting into the weights and now I have like one full stretch day and two full body days uh, with a day of rest in between. So I get three days during the week. And I, for man, me, that's really, good. I'm not, yeah, I'm not I, trying I, to play football. I, yeah, I'm just trying no, to look I, in the mirror and be like, all right. Yeah. I mean, at this point in time, let's be real as a coach, you ain't trying to go out there and play for 60 minutes. Right. You're not trying to put your body through that kind of grind anymore. I could not at this moment. There is no way. I can't. I could not even fathom. <laughs> couldn't fathom putting on a helmet and shoulder pads. Oh, man. Ever again. Like, that makes my head hurt a little like, bit. Yeah. I was telling my wife the other day that, like, uh, I was walking by a mirror as I do, and I was like, God damn, man. She's like, What? Oh, you've been going to the gym? I'm like, yeah, I've been going to the gym and it's working. <laughs> and I was like, one thing I'm missing is my neck is a little smaller than it used to be when I play. Yeah. I used to I used to do yeah. neck exercises when I play football. Yeah. I had a, you wear a helmet and you're gonna get some type of contact. I've never had a concussion in my life. And I used to I used to go hard on those like neck braces, like you mm-hmm. hold you brace it over back, and I used to do the plates on my head. Oh, if yeah. I had my head on like a bench or something, like I I used to do 45 pounds on them bitches. Like I used to put in weights. I'm not doing it anymore because I'll never put on a helmet ever again. And hey, we used to have this neck machine in high school, man. We used to tear that thing up, dude. Yeah. It was like you, I think you know what I'm talking about. I know about. What you when you go like yeah. this on the on the pad. You know, yeah. You man. And then um, you know, we learned that we could get rubber bands. You know, that was kind of the same thing, thing. Yeah. out of high school and stuff like that. It was, and man, those rubber bands, dude, I swear my neck was like, <laughs> just swollen, you know, yeah. old baby. Again, thanks to Brandon for coming on the podcast. 
If anyone listening to this episode or any of my podcast episodes, thanks for rocking with me during the off season. This is the off season.